What's up guys, it's Eric from Eric Handy, and today we have kind of a cool uh, little video for you, a nice little discussion video talking about the new mini set coming up called Champions Road, uh, which should be actually lumped into the SM7 Celestial Storm International set based on the information that we have. But uh, one of the cool things about this set is that it's actually featured around or centered around a lot of these old cards from the old EX era, which is actually, you know, if anyone's played back then or has heard anything about the game from back then, it's kind of looked back very fondly. And there's a lot of really cool cards that could potentially come back or that we hope might come back. And so for this video, I brought on special guest Pablo Mesa, fellow PokeTuber, also known as Tablemon. Um, I actually played back during this time, but I played very casually. I didn't go to any major events, but I still know about a lot of the major archetypes and cards from this era. But I wanted someone who, you know, was a little bit more experienced in this format. So that's why we have, uh, like I said, PokeTuber Tablemon over here. So, Pablo, I'm going to pass it over to you and let you introduce yourself real quick. Thank you, Eric. Thanks so much for inviting me to participate in this video. Um, it is true I have been playing for a very long time now. And this new set seems to, um, well, it's already been shown that it's going to contain upgraded versions of like some really old cards, right? And I was a teenager back then, and I was definitely very competitive, um, just like I am now. And they were some of the most enjoyable formats I've, I recall playing in. So I'm lo really looking forward to what they're going to bring in with this new set. Yeah, definitely. And, and one thing we should probably note, too, is that a lot of the, I, I guess, big cards that came out of this era, some of them were like kind of thematically tied to very specific sets. So what I mean is Pokemon like the Delta Species Pokemon, the Team Aqua Magma Pokemon, or like the Dark Team Rocket Pokemon more than likely won't be uh, you know, included in this mini set just because they're very specifically tied to certain sets from back in the day. So more than likely, it's safe to assume we won't see these. So Pokemon like the old Delta Dragonite or Metagross and stuff like that probably won't make an appearance in here. So something just to keep in mind as we go through this video. But nevertheless, I mean, this era contained, I think it was like 10 or 11 sets. Like it's a pretty big card pool. So we have plenty to talk about here. Yes. So let's just um, kick it off with the Pokemon line or not Pokemon line, but some of the potential Pokemon we could see in this mini set. We'd start with some of the ultra rares, um, specifically the gold stars. These seem like a really good candidate to bring back in this mini set since the old gold star mechanic is very similar in the new with the new prism star mechanic. So there's a couple Pokemon in particular that I think we could see, and I think probably the top contenders I can imagine would be uh, Latios star, uh, Latias star, and Rayquaza star. Um, how would you feel about those, Pablo, if we saw any of those come back? Yeah, so um, definitely the Latios twins um, were the more uh, popular played back then. Um, but I feel like with upgraded attacks, um, they could be potentially useful. Um, their energy costs were always weird, though. And back then, we did have, like, Holland's Cast Form and Holland's Magnetone and Electrode to cover those energy costs, um, along with a lot of energy acceleration options, such as uh, the Delta Dragonite that you mentioned. Um, there was a regular Metagross. And then uh, we had Blastoise EX as well. Um, so that helped uh, in coping with the energy costs. So if they brought them back, um, and upgraded their attack to be able to... Because I believe Latios did damage to stage 2s, extra damage to stage to stage 2s, and Latias to evolve Pokemon, or the other way around? I, 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure Latios was stage 2s, and I believe Latias was, I think, EX Pokemon, actually. Oh, okay, okay. I, I think that, that was the one. I, I could be mistaken, guys. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. There's a lot of cards <laughs> we're going to cover, so some of these... Uh, uh, attacks and stuff where we might not nail 100%, but you'll get the general gist of it. Yeah, so um, those those two, if they increase their damage output to cover uh, the upgraded HP that we have now, which ranges anywhere from 170 to, to 110, 220, um, I do feel like they could see some play, depending on what mechanics we have in terms of um, energy attachments, but the unit energy uh, that were recently released and their different combinations to the previous blend energies might be a hint as to what um, energy requirements we might be expecting for for them. So, for example, uh, something like 
Lydias could have a metal and a psychic energy requirement, which would go well with the unit energy and also with Malamar. So with the new Malamar coming out, so that would uh, give the deck a little bit of synergy. And yeah, then uh, another thing too with the like the Latioses and even Rayquaza as well, like you said, they all had weird attack costs, and they're actually yeah. in the video games Dragon Pokemon. So I think it'd be a safe assumption if we were to see these cards kind of reinvented or you know brought to taste standards, we'd probably see them as dragons. I think that would be a safe assumption, mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, probably would get a damage boost as well. I think. Back then, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, but I think Latios hit for like, I think it was around 150 or 130 yeah. if if they were. So so I think that was around the damage range. So we might have to see that increase to maybe closer to the 200 mark or yeah. something. <laughs> that shows you how much of a power creep we've had since back when these cards are printed. I think Rayquaza is probably a little less likely uh, just because the attack was very similar to the Necrozma GX that we have now. It did 100 mm -hmm. to all of the EXs, but like I said, we already have that in the form of a regular Necrozma GX from Burning a Shadow, so I feel like the Lottis might be uh, slightly more likely to make an appearance if we were going to see them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. And, and then Rayquaza, I mean, the benefit of Rayquaza, even if it had the same mechanic as the Necrozma GX, would be that if Rayquaza survives, perhaps you can do the attack again, right? It's not limited to That's a GX. True. That's true. So that, that. that would be an, an important difference uh, to note. Uh, but I'm sure if if it had such an attack, um, it would definitely had a it, but it would definitely have a very weird um, attack cost. Yeah, I think back then it was like two fire, two lightning, or three fire, two lightning. It was it was pretty steep. Yeah. So it'll probably be something equally as. Uh, difficult today too if you saw that but um those are probably the three gold stars i thought would be most likely to see uh reprints are there any in particular that that you're maybe hoping for pablo or any that uh you think could come back well um i feel like the other relevant one that saw a play was jolteon star um when it came into play it placed a damage counter on yourself on like on your active pokemon and on your opponent's active pokemon which once one damage counter doesn't feel like a lot um but it was just that extra little bit of damage coming from uh, a bench a bench pokemon that you could just put into play so perhaps with an upgraded like two damage counters or three damage counters to both pokemon um, maybe that mechanic could make an appearance because it's not um, it's not common to have um, Pokemon do extra damage just like immediately, especially basic Pokemon. We have abilities like Greninja, GX coming out, um, or the Frogadiers, or Golbat still. Um, but from a basic Pokemon, it's actually quite rare. So something like that, I feel I could maybe see play. Um, yeah, definitely. Especially, like, uh, we still have Drampa GX in format, so that would definitely be a nice little card if you wanted to play Drampa, it seems like. I, um, yeah. I'm a little bit more pessimistic about the some of the Evolution Gold Stars just because so far Prism Stars have been exclusively legendary Pokemon, which is the yeah, only thing true. that has me worried that we might not see some of the stuff like that. Um, but it, it's hard to say. We've only had a few sets with Prism Stars, so they could still shake things up uh, with any set and print regular uh, Prism Stars that aren't legendaries too. So we'll have to see. Yeah, Mew, Mew Star also got some some competitive play as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that yeah, the Delta species. So perhaps not as a Delta species, but um, a mimicking Mew or like a versatile Mew coming back with the Prism Star mechanic could definitely be um, possible because that is the the theme with Mew, right? Well, also, too, you mentioned, uh, like, the Versatile Mew. That might be a good segue into the um, the Pokemon EX from this era. Uh, Mew EX was actually, well, the one that we have right now, the ability is actually almost identical to the ability, or uh, I think it was Poke Body technically, back in the day on the Mew EX yeah. from Legend Maker. Um, so since, you know, Pokemon has been keen on bringing Mew back with this ability before, I think that could be a likely candidate for a card we could see come back is maybe old Mew EX. Uh, I forget the attack that it had, but I think it was kind of irrelevant from what I remember. It was mainly, uh, just like the Mew EX that we have right now, it was mainly just used for its versatile uh, Pokebody back in the day. So uh, is that a card you would uh, hope to see stick around in the form of a GX, Pablo? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm surprised we haven't had a Mew GX yet. Um... 
but yeah, I, I like the the ability to just flash the psychic type attacker. I feel like it balances the game. Like without Mew EX as an option, I feel like Puzzle would just be dominating. Instead of uh, the Zork Pokemon trading card game jokes, we would be uh, doing Puzzle Pokemon trading card game. Well, that sounds believable. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess as far as good psychic Pokemon that we can talk about, maybe uh, Bayonet EX. I think that was uh, a card. I'm actually kind of really hoping for this coming back. If um, if any of you guys haven't seen on the Pack Art of Champions Road, Bayonet is one of the Pokemon that is featured on it. And I mean, there there was a ton of Bayonet cards from this era, but Bayonet EX I think is the most likely uh, card we could see get reimagined. And uh, kind of the big thing with Bayonet EX back in the day, it had this ability to let you rearrange damage counters on either side of the field, which was uh, pretty good. Also had an attack, I believe it did. 30 plus 10 for every supporter in your discard pile. So yeah, that's definitely um, a card I would love to see kind of get uh, reimagined. Uh, how, how big was this was this card back in the day, Pablo? I know it had some success, but to what degree? Yeah, like it generally was really, really big. Um, by the time um, around February of 2017, um, that's when it was really, really big. And I actually... Uh, used Banetti X to get second place at a regional and in Houston and then first place at a regional in California back then in 2007. And I also used Banetti X at Worlds that year and I bubbled top 16. Um, it was in Hawaii back then, top 16 still existed and I got 19th place on on like 1% or something. Um, so yeah, I, Banetti X definitely has a a special place in my heart and it was just like its ability added a lot of skill because you could manipulate damage counters from your side to your opponent's side and then the shadow chant attack like it only got better or stronger as the game went on for for longer but funnily enough back then uh the way to play supporters was you would play your supporter leave it next to your active to signify that you already played your supporter, and then at the end of your turn, it would be discarded. So the first supporter you played did not add to the damage for Shadow Chant. Um, but now that rule has changed. Um, so Banet GX could possibly be, or Banet GX would possibly be um, slightly better because it wouldn't be like that immediate damage from the discarding a Sycamore or an N or whatever would immediately be added if they keep the same attack, of course. Yeah, yeah, they'd probably just scale up the, the damage output a little bit. I believe Bayonet EX was, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the damage was capped. Yeah. You could only add so much, but we haven't seen uh, a limitation like that in a while in the card game, I feel like. So if they do bring that back, I'd imagine we probably won't see a cap on the attack, if I just had to guess. Um, but there's still a, plenty of other Bayonets in the format. Uh, might be getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but I'll briefly mention one I'm, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing come back. It was from... Uh, Hidden Legends. It had an attack very similar to the Vespaquin that uh, you know we don't have in standard format anymore. But it was like I think it was a Psychic and Colorless, and you put damage counters on your opponent's active for every Pokemon in your discard, something yeah. like that. And we don't have a like B Revenge uh, style Pokemon in the current format. So if we don't get the Bayonet EX, I would really like to see that come back as well. Maybe just in the form of like a DCE based attack similar to the Vespaquin or Flareon that we've had. Uh, so that's also a Bayonet I, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing, but I would prefer the EX. I think there's a lot of potential with that uh, same type of ability, assuming they would keep that. I think that was kind of the big selling point of the card. So uh, definitely uh, some cool Bayonets that we could see come back though. Yeah, funnily enough, I use that Bayonet you're talking about right now, I also used it at Worlds in 2004. <laughs> um, so I'm a big Bayonet fan. And yeah, the the attack was capped at six damage counters. Um, then they released Vespiquen with no cap. So if we saw that one, I'm sure we would see uh, no cap once again uh, for that one. And also too, like you're saying, with uh, Mew EX leaving the format, uh, probably after the summertime, uh, if we had a Pokemon, like a decent psychic Pokemon coming into the format to keep Buzzwell in check, that would also be pretty important. So, again, if either of those Bayonets got printed and were, you know, scaled up accordingly for today's standards, I think that would be uh, pretty healthy for, for the game, actually. So, kind of rooting for one of those to happen. Um, another EX that we actually already have confirmed to come back 
is going to be Blaziken EX. And this was another pretty good card back in the day. It is worth mentioning there were two Blaziken EXs, and we don't have confirmation as to which one Pokemon is going to pull inspiration from. But I'm assuming most likely it's going to be the one back from uh, Team Aqua versus Team Magma that discarded energy. Um, since I think that one was generally the more playable one, though. Um, yeah, the the fighting type Blaziken EX definitely never saw the light of day in in competitive decks. Um, but then the Magma and Aqua card, um, like it was the highest uh, or the most expensive card in the trading card game at one point. So it was the really? the Tapu Lele or the Shaman um, of its era. And back then, I believe that people were uh, not very pleased at paying fifteen dollars for each one of them. So you can imagine how how they would feel about the, the $60 Tapu Leles or the $100 Shamans that we were uh, at one point. Uh, but yeah, that card, it got so hyped um, that that was its market value and people were just, uh, like people weren't happy about it. They were calling for it to be banned. Wow, um, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty big and um, so it was really that good because of of the other plays again. Like the card on its own is okay, but with the synergy of evolving from the same like Pokemon as the as the other plays again that got energy back from the discard pile, that's what made it so good. And the fact that HPs were capped at a hundred for non GXs or non EXs pretty much. Um, so it was a combination of both that really really worked. And so when I saw the plays again EX confirmed. Like if they bring back the old Blaziken as well, um, that would definitely be, uh, be a big nostalgia deck for me. Well, one thing I think is really interesting too is that, um, like you mentioned, the old Blaziken. One thing that's interesting: the GXs typically have three sort of abilities or attacks, but the old EX only had two. So one thing I think would be awesome if they did is if they brought back the attacks of like the old Blaziken EX. Of course, scaled up. But then for the third ability or attack, they took the ability from the uh, fire starter Blaziken you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can give a little bit of context on that. Like you said, it accelerated fire energy out of the discard pile. I believe it's to your bench, similar to the Malamar or Electrix. Yeah, and things like exactly. That. And uh, the Blaziken EX, I forget the actual damage output, but it discarded energy to do more damage, correct? Uh, well, it discarded two fire energy attached to it, and then it dealt 100 damage to any of your opponent's Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Um, so back then, like, because every, it was mostly a Blaziken-centered format, um, it was either you, like Zorak right now, it was either you played Blaziken or you played to counter Blaziken. And Blaziken EX was huge because the fire started Blaziken had 100 HP. So if you sniped your opponent's Blaziken before... Um, they did yours, you would have the energy advantage, and then Blaziken EX came along with Rayquaza EX, which um, could one-hit KO anything. So you had Blaziken EX to cover the Blaziken, and then you had Rayquaza EX to cover the Blaziken EX, and that was the whole synergy for the deck. I think that would be really cool to see come back, because especially since we have... Um, I mean, the deck back in the day had a Delcaddy that could discard energy as a, like a source of draw power, but now we have Zorark GX, and I think that would be really interesting to see, like if they did bring that Blaziken EX with the ability of the regular Blaziken, I think that'd be maybe a fun Zorark variant to try out, maybe. Um, yeah, there's, definitely. I mean, we could even see Delcaddy get brought back too. It was like, I think, discard a five, or discard a basic energy, draw three, or draw two? Draw three, yeah, draw three. So that's actually pretty good, so... Um, yeah, and then you have Malo to replace the old Oracle, and it's like... Uh, 14-year-old Pablo would be very happy if in <laughs> 2018 you could still play Blaziken, and Delcaddy, Rayquaza or something. I think one thing that's like kind of a fun little fact too, they actually did bring back the attack of that Blaziken EX like you, you were just talking about. You discard two, snipe 100. It was on the Furious Fist Blaziken. It sniped 150. Never yeah. saw play, but uh, fun fact for all you guys out there, that attack has still been around in more recent years too. But uh, that card, not the best, though. Um, yeah. Because but, it didn't have the Firestarter Blaze again to go with it. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm definitely right there with you. I would I would love to see uh, Blaze Akin, EX, and or the regular one kind of get brought back. Really love that. Especially Fire Pokemon 2 right now don't have 
a lot of energy acceleration. Now, of course, Volcanion has Max Flixers, and we have Kiawe, but, like, that's not... I don't know if you can build a, a Stage 2 deck around Kiawe or, like, Max Elixirs or anything like that. Yeah, so. yeah you wouldn't want to Kiawe onto a 70 HP Torchic no, <laughs> on turn <definitely>. 1. <laughs> so, I hope they bring that one back. Um, another Pokemon I think that was pretty popular at one point was a Medicham EX. I think that's another... Uh, potential contender. Um, I'm blinking right now. I'm forgetting all of a sudden what the card does. I remember <laughs> it had a Poke Body and two attacks, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, is th is that a card you think, or that uh, you would like well, to see come back? Well, I mean, Medicham X was very popular uh, back in the day. It's Poke Body. Uh, when it was active, your opponent's Pokemon couldn't use Poke Powers. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I feel like because we just got Palatian GX um, and we like the exact same mechanic essentially of preventing abilities, I would say uh, it's unlikely that we'll see Medicham. Um, but uh, it would essentially today would be like a fighting type uh, Palatian GX, which would obviously be even stronger against Zoroark decks, right? Yeah, that would uh, be so and then <laughs> it, it would also have uh, immediate protection against Mew EX, because I, like, in theory, it would also stop its ability. So that could be, actually make it um, the best fighting deck immediately. That's a really and good then, point, yeah. Yeah, and then it was played in, like, a very teched out uh, control deck, because its first attack, pure power, um, allowed you to put three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you wanted. Um, and then you had not counter catcher, but pow hand extension, which worked like counter catcher, but could also uh, control energy. And then you had soup teleporter to make sure that you started Wolfed and then you switched into Medicham, uh, well, into Meditite, and then you evolved. So it had a lot of tool cards that actually, like, essentially still exist today, such as counter catcher, such as Ninja Boy, which is like soup teleporter. Um, so. It would be very interesting to see it come back, especially in a Zorak dominating format. Um, but just because its ability would essentially be the same as Glacians, I feel like that means um, we could probably uh, at least not see it in this first set. Um, if they start doing yeah. more reprints, we might see it in the future, but not when Glacian is just the newest card released. I think it's a safe assumption, so I'd agree with that. <laughs> if you're a fan of Medicham, you might, might be let down, maybe. We'll see, though. Um, another Pokemon, or two more Pokemon that I think could potentially see pop up is going to be uh, a couple of Gen 1 Pokemon, the first which is Electrode uh, GX. Um, Electrode is featured on the pack art of Champions Road, if I remember correctly. And there was an Electrode EX back from Fire Red Leaf Green, which had a pretty cool ability. Um, I believe you got to knock your Electrode out. You did give up two prizes because it was an EX, of course. but. Uh, Pablo, I think you were telling me you got five energy out of your discard and attach them anywhere you want. Yeah, you got five energy um, from the discard and you attached them to any Pokemon you wanted except Pokemon EX. Um, so it played, the deck back then played, was called ZRE and it did really well at Worlds in, 20, in 2005. And then there was also a, an Electrode version a Tyranitar deck that had Electrode to accelerate energy. Um, but the first one used uh, Magmar as a beefy Pokemon to absorb the energy, and then it would play Rayquaza EX, and then Moltres EX, and Zapdos EX, which, when coming into play, would absorb energy that was already in play. So that was the idea behind the deck. And then Lightning Typing for Zapdos was really good because everyone was playing Pidgeot. Um, so that, with Pokemon Reversal, could snipe the the main Pokemon that people relied on to to get their decks going. Yeah, and you mentioned the uh, Legendary Birds. We already have Articuno GX confirmed, which is uh, kind of like a pseudo reprint of the Secret Rare Articuno EX from Fire Red Leaf Green. So it is potential we could see Moltres and Zapdos uh, both as well. Uh, one thing we do have to mention, though, this is, I believe, a mini set in Japan. I don't think it's a full-fledged set, so I don't know how many GXs are actually going to be in the set but there's all sorts of contenders like we're going over. I would imagine some of these probably will be in there. We just don't know which ones just yet. Yeah. Um, there is also Mr. Mime featured on the pack art as well, and there is a Mr. Mime EX back from Fire Red Leaf Green as well. Well, two to be specific. Two, yeah. Um, 
I don't recall that card ever really seeing play from what I remember. Again, I played more casually, but I don't remember that being um, like a big force in the meta game at the time. Um, it had, had a pokey body. Well, each one had a pokey body. It prevented damage from either like even amounts, even, yeah, damage or odd amounts. So, yeah, that that was their like their play their mechanic uh, between the Mister Mimes and I. I couldn't tell you for sure, but I seem to have a vague memory of one of them getting play. Maybe like just thinking about the numbers of Rayquaza and Blaziken and stuff. Maybe it was the events, Mr. Mime, because everything dealt like 100 or 120 or 60 damage. Um, like for the most part, maybe it was the events one, uh, but it definitely wasn't like a meta changing card or anything. I just hope if they do bring back that type of Mr. Mom, I really hope it doesn't. I hope it's not a GX and taking up two GX slots out of the set. I'd be I'd be a little bit bummed out if they do bring that back. I would personally probably prefer them to just do it as like a regular, just like a rare Mr. Mime or something instead. Yeah, I agree. Although we like every Mr. Mime we've had lately, it's just the the vanilla prevent bench damage, right? So mm -hmm. hopefully they do something different with it this time. Definitely so. Um, yeah, we could probably go on all day about the EXs. There's just so many from this era. Before we, I guess, start talking about some of the other uh, non-ultra-rare Pokemon, are there any other EXs that you have a soft spot for that you would like to see come back, Paula? Um, you know, Suikune EX and Swampert EX. Uh, those two, like, they were um, the part of an archetype very briefly. The Fighting in 2004. Swampert EX? Yeah, the Fighting Swampert EX. Um, like it, it won Worlds in Juniors, I believe, in 2004, or maybe it was Seniors. Um, but yeah, like those two Pokemon, especially, have always uh, been of my personal favorite. Like, I just like the design of the Pokemon. And then we never got a Suikone EX, I believe. We did um, not. And, we and then we already have, yeah, we have Raikou GX and we have Entei GX. So I don't know why they, they're neglecting Suikone GX as a card now or maybe they're just saving it for this hit but it's so weird too because like Suicune's like the mascot for Pokemon Crystal so it's like I yeah. feel like inherently a more marketable Pokemon too but they've been choosing to exclude it for yeah. whatever the reasons and, yeah and uh, Pokemon Crystal got re-released in the virtual console like very recently as well so it's like I don't know what's going on with Pokemon and Suicune <laughs> I have no idea I'm, I'm right there with you I, I if not in this set, I hope that they would give us a Suicune GX at some point, though. Yeah, and then there are a lot of cards from the from the Delta series that I would have liked to see, but as you mentioned, like that Delta series felt like they just didn't know what to invent anymore <laughs> in between Generation three and four, so they went with the Delta Pokemon. Uh, but now there are just so many Pokemon to to choose from that I doubt we'll see something like that return. Yeah, and that kind of bums me out, too, because I think the most exciting trainer cards from that era are revolving around the Holland engine. Yeah. Like with Transceiver and Mentor and all that stuff. So it's unlikely we will get the like all of those back, but uh, there's still yeah. some other cool trainer cards we'll talk about uh, shortly, too. Uh, I guess before we get there, though, I guess some of the more uh, playable non-ultra-rare Pokemon, I think the big one that I would really love to see come back in some way is going to be Pidgeot, like you already mentioned. Had that quick search ability. It'll let you just search your deck for a card every turn. <laughs> a really, really good ability, or Pokemon Power, as it was called uh, back, yeah. back then. I'm, you know, I think today the format is a lot faster, and I, I'd be curious how good a Stage 2 Pokemon like that would be, but the ability would be absolutely insane assuming they keep that ability is is that a, a card you would be excited to see come back pablo i mean for nostalgia purposes yes but as you mentioned like in today's format a stage setting up a whole stage two to search for one card when you have zoric in combination with mallow which is essentially a stage one that searches for two um i feel like it wouldn't see play just because the format has definitely gotten a lot um, a lot faster in that regard. Um, I think we have Zorg, and therefore we won't be seeing such a mechanic. 
uh, like we might see it on a stage two, but it won't see play, and we definitely won't see it on a stage one because Zorg is like the balanced um, middle ground between uh, drawing enough cards, having access to your deck, uh, but not searching for any given card every turn. Um, I definitely felt like that was uh, more broken than they intended it to be. Um, so I don't think we would be seeing that come back, at least not until the format is a lot slower and we are back to a more stage two reliant format, which doesn't seem to be the direction they want to go in anyway. So um, I, I think if, um, if Pidgeot actually had a really nice just DCE based attack, I could maybe see that. Also depends on how much hit points it has and things like that. Yeah, but, true. Uh, it would have to probably be a good attacker. Um, but you never know, like after the rotation right now, I think Cynthia is really going to be our only good source of draw power. So a lot of the really aggressive cards like Sycamore, that a lot of these basic decks can be used, and things like Max Elixirs are going to go away. So that is worth mentioning. I do think, uh, I mean, again, assuming that we don't see anything like that printed in Champions Road or Celestial Storm, uh, I do think the format will look to slow down a little bit, but uh, I'd, I'd still probably echo the overall sentiments. It's it's a stage two game's a little too fast these days, but uh, I would I would still be excited to see it though. Yeah, of course, of course. I, I'd be very excited to see it. I just I don't think I could fit it into any deck at the moment. Now a card that I think actually could see uh, some play is Mag Cargo. We already know that. Uh, uh, Ludicolo is coming back, and I believe people played Mag Cargo in Ludicolo. Was that correctly? Yeah. So they could yeah. be bringing Mag Cargo back, which would. I, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but it had an ability. Uh, you got to search your deck for a card, put it on top of your deck. And you just mentioned Zorark GX, so that seems like a pretty, pretty good little combo just on a stage one. Um, I'm not sure if I want that back or not, but I could definitely see that being a Pokemon that, that they would bring back, though. Yeah, so, um, like, I feel like the deck back then, uh, like, the archetype Ludi Cargo was a thing because um, Ludicolo was the only Pokemon that had such an ability to just draw one card, and then um, it comboed really well with my cargo. But, for example, now I mentioned Zoark and uh, my cargo, at least in standard, um, there's a reason why Zoark is not a standalone deck, like an expanded, because Zoark, as an attacker on its own, um, is nothing to write home about, right? That's why it always relies on Torque or Kalisabot or Cardivar. Like it's a good partner for them, and it allows uh, the the deck to perform well thanks to its ability. Um, but it's not like the main attacker. And so if you put in a Pokemon such as Macargo, unless it had an amazing attack um, to stack your deck, and then you had Zorak to draw the the card, you would definitely need a, like a third line of something else that could dish out the damage. Um, so I feel like we might see Ludi Cargo back just based on the images um, as its own archetype. Like they might make Ludicolo really good and combine really well with my cargo. Um, but I don't think I would pair it with, uh, with Zorg despite the synergy between the abilities because then you're left in like a weird scenario in the, well, what do I attack with after I get all these cards? Mm-hmm. I, I'm excited. To, I would be more excited to try and expand it. I was um, yeah. I actually uploaded a deck on the Rare Candy channel a while back. I was messing around with Swampert Zor Arc GX and expanded just because Swampert has the same uh, ability. And so, yeah. like you said, expanded where Zora can be more of like a main attacker. I think that would be a little bit more exciting. But like you said, in standard format, Zora typically relies on other Pokemon to help him, uh, you know, carry his way through a game. So uh, I would agree with that though. Yeah, like the old my cargo had um, like just a a regular D, DLX damage um, yeah, with your like, attack. It's so. like fire DCE fifty or it was something really like forgettable. Like I think it was. Yeah, and so like nothing to write home about really. There was another good my cargo that had the dual armor ability, which um, made it a fighting type as well as a, a fire type at the same time. So that could be interesting, like if there was a Macargo with that ability, um, because the fighting typing would, of course, help in countering um, Zorg. I could see that. That'd be cool. Anything to keep Zorg in check is uh, always a good thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, let me go through my list. I have a bunch of other non-EXs. 
Let's see. Oh, there is an old Gardevoir back from Ruby Sapphire that saw some play. Um, it was like a form of energy acceleration. You got Search Your Deck for a Psychic Energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon, and they took two damage counters, I believe it was. Yeah, exactly. So I'd be interested to see if maybe they bring that back as a fairy type. Is that something that you feel like would be uh, exciting uh, since we have Gardevoir GX? I think it would be, and I could see something like the such an ability is really good, but it's definitely outclassed by something like Vika Volt, right? Which gets a, a grass and a lightning out of your deck, and there's no damage counters, but. I could totally see a Gardevoir getting a Fairy and a Psychic out of your deck uh, to accelerate something like a Gardevoir GX or like, I don't know, um, not the Ultra Necrozma, but I don't know, just any attacker. It's like, um, it could be a really cool mechanic to see uh, something similar to Vigavolt, but applied to Guardi. Or, or it might just be insanely good with Gardevoir GX and they wouldn't release something like that, but yeah. <laughs> um, it could be cool. It could definitely be cool. Gardevoir definitely seems to be a Pokemon that uh, that Pokemon loves to print, like any yeah. chance that they get. So I think that's definitely uh, a card that I think would be a safe assumption to see come back in some capacity. Uh, I would hope they don't scale up the two damage counters to make yeah. In today's format. I think even having damage counters get put in today's format would be kind of an insult since it's a stage two. It's it's a lot more difficult to get out your stage twos these days. So I would at least hope if they keep the ability at just one energy, I hope they would waive the uh the damage counter um, yeah. part of the ability. Yeah, especially because Big Ult exists and it's the same but better with no damage counter. So I don't see why they would keep the damage counter option. Yeah, and if they do bring that back too, we do have to remember Glade's probably going to be rotated, so it would give Gardevoir decks another uh, non or you know one prize uh, evolution Pokemon to pivot into at some point, and they could easily scale up the attack. It was like ten for every energy on your field, was that or ten for every energy on Gardevoir maybe? Uh, I believe it was on Gardevoir itself. I generally don't remember very well. It's been so long. Yeah. I think Gardevoir EX was the one that was like all of the energy. Yeah. Oh, it's 10 damage for every energy on Gardevoir and the opposing Pokemon. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. that's basically infinite force. Then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a small infinite force. So, it's a baby infinite force. Maybe we could see it bumped up to 20. Maybe. That, that'd yeah. be cool even. But... Or we could see something like the Secret Wonders Gardevoir, which was so dominant. And it had an ability which allowed you to... Uh, use a supporter from your opponent's discard pile as the effect of its ability, and um, its psychic luck attack dealt 60 damage, and your opponent couldn't use poke powers during their turn, so essentially a shadow stitching. Um, so something like that would be extremely powerful as a partner to Gardevoir GX. Yeah, that'd be cool. They, um, well, like we mentioned earlier, they did f uh, reprint for Alligator. As well, we just got news of that uh, this morning at the time of filming. So they're not even really locked into just printing Pokemon from the uh, EX era. So you never know, they could even bring back, you know, that Gardevoir with the old Ruby Sapphire artwork, but maybe take inspiration from, uh, like you're saying, the Secret Wonders Gardevoir from the Diamond and Pearl era. So there's yeah. all sorts of cool things I think they could really do with Gardevoir. I really hope they bring it back in some capacity. I love Gardevoir GX, like just already as a deck. I would love to see it get some more support, especially as uh, Gallade rotates after the summer. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Gardevoir GX as well. <laughs> big fan. Mm -hmm. You get uh, you played at Worlds, didn't you? Yeah, I played at Worlds. I won a regional with it, and then in a smaller capacity, I did well with it at Portland as well. Like it was Ilion with Gardevoir, so every time I play Gardevoir, I seem to do well. So I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> right there with you. Um, another Pokemon. Um, I was looking at that I wouldn't mind maybe coming back is the Jirachi back from I believe it's the Deoxys set it has had an ability or Pokemon power back then I believe if, if it was your active you got to look at the top four or five cards five yeah five yeah and then you got to pick one of those cards and put it into your hand so right now we don't have that many great I think support Pokemon as far as like good starters. We don't really have starter Pokemon these days in general, um, outside of maybe a low end Vulpix most of the time. So I think that would be an interesting card to see come back. 
Um, so, I don't know. Is is that a card you'd be excited about, Pablo? Yeah, um, that Jirachi definitely saw a lot of play. And as you said, like before we had Jirachi, and then before that we had cards like Dunsparce, where you would focus on starting with one Pokemon, and then you would build your strategy from that. And who knows, maybe such a Jirachi would actually make something like Ninja Boy more playable, because you would start that, and then once it helps you set up, you could Ninja Boy it for something more useful to evolve and keep attacking and whatnot. Um, so it could open up a lot of um, a lot of cool plays as well. And it was also played with a, with another Jirachi um, from Hidden Legends, which uh, had the same attack as the current Diancy, which for one colorless, you would choose one of your bench Pokemon and search for an evolution and evolve immediately. Um, so something like that, um, either Jirachi would be really cool to see come back. I feel like Diancy is not played more because of the fairy type uh, requirement for the first attack. But if uh, Jirachi got released with a colorless uh, cost, it could definitely see its way into a few more decks and maybe even make stage 2s more viable as well. I think that would actually be really exciting if, because like I said, there, there were two different Jirachis back then. Uh, I think it'd be really cool, kind of like how I mentioned with the Blaziken GX potential idea, if they merged the two ideas, maybe kept the ability of the yeah. Deoxys one and the attack of the other one. I think that'd be a nice little boost for uh, stage two decks. And mm -hmm. especially after rotation, which like I said, we're losing some of the more aggressive cards in the format. Uh, that might be a good time for a good starter Pokemon like that uh, to come back into the game. And I love Jirachi as a Pokemon, so I would absolutely love to see a card like that uh, come back. Do you think that the ability or Pokemon power is fine the way that it, that it was? Do you think they should just leave it, look at the top five cards, pick one? Or do you think uh, they should even expand that a little bit more? Or, or are you happy with how the card was designed originally? I think... I think... Uh, looking at the top five would be pretty balanced. Um, like that was balanced by the fact that Jirachi fell asleep immediately afterwards. Oh, yeah, um, about that. So perhaps that would counteract if they combined both Jirachis, it would be awkward to use the ability and then be asleep and therefore you wouldn't be able to attack. Um, so maybe as a way to upgrade it, they would take that out. Um, but I felt like looking at the top five by choosing one is. Um, decently balanced like it's not game breaking to choose one card on your turn one or something and it would just increase consistency for decks such as you get to search for the bridget in those top five or um you get to you get closer to the rare candy on your next turn to evolve into your stage two or something like that so i think it would be fine to to see the top five maybe top six or maybe top four i'm not sure but something five like feels that. like a like a decent number yeah and uh, I guess speaking of other starter Pokemon, we had a Dunsparce back from Sandstorm that I've seen a lot of people uh, talk about uh, being excited to have come back. Uh, since Dunsparce is featured on the pack art of Champions Road, that is definitely a Pokemon we could see. there. I mean, there were plenty of Dunsparces printed during this time, but the Sandstorm one generally seems to be the one people are most excited about. Uh, Sandstorm was already a little bit old when I started playing, so I don't really remember what the card did. Is there, could you maybe shed some light on that, Pablo? Yeah, so that Dunsparce was a huge staple, and it was actually like one of the most expensive commons, and getting it as a reverse holo was impossible. Um, it, with its first attack, uh, Strike and Run, it did, um, you search for three basic Pokemon in your deck, you put them onto your bench, and then you had the option to switch out the Dunsparce. Um, after you were done searching. So it was like, if you expected your opponent to be able to knock out your active, you could uh, strike and run, run into something to sacrifice, and then do it again next turn to fi finish uh, filling up your bench. And then its second attack was also pretty decent. It did 10 damage, and then it flipped to Paralyze. Um, so after it was done with its usefulness in terms of searching, uh, it could still annoy your opponent and like buy you a turn. In a, in a weird scenario. So that's what made Dunsparce so good. Um, like, obviously, we've had flip for paralysis attacks for a very long time, and we've, all, we've also had search your deck um, never again for three Pokemon, I believe, only for two in terms of an attack. Um, I think, um, actually, it was Pachirisu from... It, from one of the Diamond and Pearl sets. It might be Majestic. Yeah, but it, but it searched for three different types. 
Oh, what? Like it couldn't. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I remember. Let's see. Let me. Curious. Yeah, I can check. It was uh, from Diamond and Pearl. No. Uh, 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 MD. Plasma. Nope. Wait. T E. Search your deck. Oh no, you're right. Okay, so my bad. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, so we've had one instance of said attack, and Patrice also saw a lot of play, right? Um, so the Don's part, the second attack was also what made it really, really good. Like all the Blaziken decks, all the Gardevoir decks, all the Metagross decks, all the Swamper decks, everyone was just running for Don's parts um, to to set up. You would search for your Tarchics, your Skitties, your Magnemites, um, your Modkips. Um, because al almost all decks were also running the Delcaddy Magneton engine, or at least Delcaddy as well. Um, so yeah, Dunsparce was pretty big, and I'd be very excited to to see it come back. And if it was the exact card, um, and I was able to use my reverse holo ones from Sandstorm, I'd be ecstatic. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm skeptical how good it would be with a fighting weakness these days. That's the only downside True. to it. If it was that... any other weakness, I'd be more excited, but... Yeah, and I guess back then there was never a card, um, like, there was nothing like Bridget right now. And there was, like, Pachirisu was good, and then Pokemon Mentor, um, not not Pokemon Mentor, Pokemon Collector came out, and it stopped seeing play. And, there was like, a... before Pachirisu, we had Holon Mentor. But... There was also Lynette Search. Lynette Search. Oh, yeah. that's the one that searches for three different types. Yeah, that's it? the one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know. know. how popular that card was, though. It was... I don't recall Lanets being popular at all. Um, because of that restriction. Like, you couldn't just search for three Zoruas right now with Lanets. That was its issue. Um, so, perhaps with Bridget, Dunsparce wouldn't have the impact that it was like. Also, because of the fighting weakness. Um, but the nostalgia is definitely there. <laughs> yeah, I'm still down for them to, to reprint. You never know. I mean... Uh, the format changes, you know, every three months. So Buzzle might not be good in, you know, half a year from now. So you never yeah, know. Yeah, sure. So anything that helps, uh, like, evolution-based decks, I'm always a big fan of. That's always been uh, my favorite direction the game has ever been headed. That's one reason I enjoyed this era of the card game, because it was so evolution-heavy. Um, I guess we can also talk about a couple of the other evolution Pokemon we could see come back. Uh, Nidoqueen was a popular... Pokemon, uh, Queendom, I believe is what people call the deck. Yeah, yeah, Queendom back in two thousand and five. It was like um, a swarm deck, right? Just a bunch of Nido Queens. Yeah, it was basically. a a four three four Nido Queen line, a two a three two three Pidgeot. It was like the first deck to use anything uh, higher than a two one two, and then it used a one one Milotic line as well. And yeah, pretty pretty good deck for sure. And I would love to see Nido Queen make a comeback as well. Hey, it was fighting type too, so that would actually be kind of exciting. Uh, yeah. Sorry, being so popular. Um, yeah. What was its attack? What was it like a fighting, or was it just three colorless? I forget, but it did more damage for it, every Nido Queen you had in play, or every, or something like it, that, right? Yeah, it was uh, base forty damage, I believe, or fifty. Well, actually, it might have been sixty, and for one fighting and two colorless. Uh, back then, we had double rainbow energy. Uh, we didn't have double colorless, but we had double rainbow. And it did uh, 60 base damage plus 10 for every evolution you had in play, including Nidoqueen. So um, it didn't matter if it was a Pijoto or a Nidorina or the Milotic. It just added damage for every evolution you had in play. I and then it its first like... attack... Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, no, its first okay, attack, yeah. Um, for a single grass energy, it did toxic where it plays two damage counters instead of one. So I feel like that would definitely be scaled quite a bit, because now we have things like Toxapex, which put six damage counters in between turns or something like that. Mm -hmm. Also, Nidoqueen now gets printed frequently as a Psychic type. So even if they print it as a Psychic type, I wouldn't even mind that either, just because uh, kind of the big triangle or rock, paper, scissors that the format has right now is dark fighting and Psychic types. So if you can beat, you know, one of those, I think that's fine. So if they printed it as fighting or psychic, I think would be, I think would be fine. But they could easily scale those numbers up, like you're saying. Uh, I don't know the right what the right number should be, but definitely a card I could see them uh, 
potentially bring back. I know that'd be another one a lot of people would be very nostalgic over. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'd um, be very happy to see it come back. It is worth mentioning there is a Nitto King right now that boosts the damage of Nitto Queen's attack, so that could be a cute little fun card if you wanted to go that route. But um, yeah, it's definitely a card that I could I could see coming back. You did mention my low tick as well. That's actually one of the cards I had on my list. Do you mind uh, sharing some insight about that one, Pablo? Yeah, so my low tick was a very uh, specific tech um, back then. There was this deck called Rock Block, which um, its strategy was to place damage counters all over the field. Um, like it, it was the the most viable spread deck. Um, Dark Tyranitar spread damage in between turns to basic Pokemon. Um, Dark Ampharos deal damage to any Pokemon that evolved, just like Potom. And then it had uh, a a tool card essentially that had an attack. So you choose to use that attack instead of your own, and you would devolve your whole opponent's side of the field. So there was a lot of synergy between the cards. And so um, my Lodic was a, was a tech card included in Needle Queen decks, um, which when you evolve Fivas into my Lodic, um, you would just heal everything. Heal both your side and your opponent's side of the field. Like the whole field would get cleaned. Um, so after Rock Lock took a lot of time or a lot of turns spreading out their damage and using their resources, you would just, uh, back then you could wear candy at stage one. You could play your basic Pokemon and play a rare candy onto a stage one, not necessarily a stage two. And you didn't have to wait a turn for the basic to be in play. So out of the blue with quick search from Pidgeot, you could just be searching for the pieces and then you would just drop Phoebus, rare candy, Milotic, heal your whole field and then just uh, wreck the rock lock player. Um, that was like the main strategy. Rocklog was really big for Worlds that year, and that was the reasoning behind including the one one Milotic line in the Queendom decks. Yeah, Milotic. That's another one of those Pokemon that I feel like is kind of marketable for Pokemon. I feel like they they like to print Milotic cards, so that's definitely that was one reason I actually wrote it down. It was a decent card back in the day, and uh, I think a lot of people like would just be excited over a new Milotic card. So that's one I actually think could come back. Um, is that a car that, that you think would be exciting to see come back for today's format, though? Uh, probably not, because uh, it doesn't seem like spreading decks are very viable. Um, like, probably, even... huh? Uh, I'd probably argue the, the Bayonet EX probably seems a little bit more exciting as far as spread decks go. If we yeah, bring exactly. Back old cards. <laughs> yeah, because Bayonet EX could actually, like, uh, spread damage in terms of uh, getting enough to knock out a Pokemon, whereas Milotic would only be helpful against Tapu Koko decks or um, like a, a Potan focused uh, Garbodor deck or something like that, which are definitely not common whatsoever. Definitely. Um, let's see. I think we're nearing the end of my list I had written down here. Are there any other Pokemon um, that come to mind for you that, that you wouldn't mind seeing come back in this new set? Um, well, we saw that the Lantern uh, was coming back. Um, that Lantern saw, saw play. I played it at Worlds in 2004. Um, so it was very cool to see the, the art right there. Um, I'm excited to see how they upgrade the card. Um, what else? Delcari. Delcari could yeah. be. Yeah, we mentioned Delcari, yeah. Yeah, Delcari could be a nice card. Um, we have Magneton in the way of Starmie, I guess. Uh, so probably, like, we might see that if they want to keep that ability in the Sun and Moon block. Um, otherwise, maybe not, but it would be a card, a cool card to see. Uh, but no, other than that, I really can't come up with with anything else um, that brings any nostalgia or anything. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think a lot of the other exciting cards, like we kind of mentioned too, are uh, some of the more like set specific ones like the Delta Pokemon as an example or like the Magma or Team Rocket Pokemon so yeah um, that eliminates uh, a good chunk of the card pool right there but I think we we probably hit on probably the big ones people are are probably most looking forward to hopefully yeah so I guess going into the trainer cards and energy there's definitely no shortage of cool things we could see to come back uh, one card I actually think is definitely a good candidate to come back is Cessation Crystal and this is a card that um, it, it kind of acts in the way Garbodor already acts. It's a tool card when you attach it. Uh, both Pokemon or all the Pokemon play couldn't use Poke Bodies or Poke Powers, and with 
uh, garbotoxin being rotated out and wild fat being rotated out, there's not really a good way of locking abilities. So if they bring back Cessation Crystal, I think that would actually be really good for the format as, as far as some sort of way to lock abilities. Uh, back then too, they also had Windstorm, which was the same as Field Blower today. So there's a nice, you know, balance to that card already. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a card I'd, I'd be really excited to see come back. What about you, Pablo? Yeah, that, that would actually be a very decently balanced card, as you say. Um, it hadn't crossed my mind because it's from the from the Delta era, but I guess there's the the restriction to the Pokemon to, probably doesn't apply to the item cards or supporters, um, as it does to the different type Pokemon. So yeah, Cessation Crystal could be could be a nice way to to like balance things out uh, in terms of Zoark dominating at the moment or in general, and as you say, like. Pokemon seems to always like a like to have a way to uh, limit abilities. Like they print broken abilities, but then they always print a way to uh, limit set abilities. Um, so yeah, Cessation Crystal would be a good way to to give to make viable decks that don't rely on abilities um, by stopping opponents' abilities and not just be forced to play Glacier and GX every time. <laughs> yeah, because right now, if uh, you know, again, we don't know everything that's going to be printed in. Uh, Champions Road and Celestial Storm, but right now, assuming there are no other ability locking cards being printed uh, by rotation, the only things we're going to have is going to be Glaceon GX, like you said, and then Alolan Muck, but that's only targeted to basics, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and well, both the cards are, are tied only to very specific sorts of cards, so without mm -hmm. something like a Hex Maniac or like a uh, Garboder in play, I think Cessation Crystal would really fit nicely into the format. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really actually hoping that is a card that gets printed. I'm really excited to see if they, uh, you know, pull the trigger and, and bring that one back. Um, another really good card back from that era, Versus Seeker. I mean, we haven't been without it for too long, but it was originally uh, a card from Fire Red Leaf Green. Yeah. So it's definitely a contender to come back. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I, I'm so used to Standard at this point. I don't miss Versus Seeker that much. But I would, I still wouldn't mind seeing it come back, just because right now one of supporters and tech supporters aren't the most uh, playable right now outside of Zorark variants. So I wouldn't mind Verse Seeker coming back just for that reason alone. But um, how do you feel about Verse Seeker, Paula? It hasn't been that long since we've been without it, but you yeah, it, right? yeah, it hasn't been a year. Um, it, it does go well with the theme of the set. Um, I don't know how healthy it would be to the format. Um, just because um, Zorak decks would get an even larger boost by not, like, a lot of the time you're double puzzling for resources, but then you're also double puzzling for, like, Kuzma's or Acerolas and stuff. So taking away that restriction of having to play two cards at the same time rather than just one might make Zorak just a little bit, or, yeah, a little bit better than it currently is. Um, as a theme, I like it. In general, in the format, I I do prefer it not being in there um, because it forces players to be more careful with their supporters, and I feel like it it um, rewards those who actually take this um, no recovery into account. Whereas Verse Seeker just allows you to play more recklessly, if you will. Definitely pros and cons to it. I'd agree with that. I, I will say this: uh, Puzzles of Time probably will rotate, though. To be fair, so. True. So outside of puzzles, all we really have to reuse some of these text cores is going to be Palpad, which hasn't seen the most play. I think it's an okay card, but um, uh, Versus Seeker definitely would be a much more playable way of reusing supporters. Uh, we do have Lusamine as well, but that, again, doesn't really see much play outside of, like, mill decks. Yeah. So, um, I could take it or leave it if they don't reprint Versus Seeker. I'm fine with it, but if they do reprint it, I'm fine with that as well. Uh, but definitely, I think, a very likely card that could pop up just because it is one of the big cards from that era and it's not tied to any specific set like the delta pokemon or anything like that and uh so yeah i, I could i could see it coming back it remains to be seen if they'll do it just because they just printed pal pad and versus secret just r rotated a year ago so it's hard to say um it could go either way but i'm fine with it whichever way they they decide to go yeah now i guess something to consider with this set is the fact that it did rotate 
from our format, but the Japanese players play a completely different format. That's correct. Yes. And so um, maybe by reprinting Versus Seeker, it would be a good way to keep it in their format because so right now the Japanese players can still play Versus Seeker. It's like they're playing Expanded, but with a, with a more limited card pool. Um, but Versus Seeker is still in there, so by printing it again would guarantee that when they rotate finally to the Sun and Moon block, um, they would have access to it. So I don't think uh, most decisions or some decisions that are made uh, thinking about our standard format and our rotation, I think a lot of them are also made or mainly made uh, thinking about their format. So that would be a pro to reprinting Versus Seeker for sure. Okay. Yeah, I completely forgot about that too. Um, as far as, I don't really remember too many other like super, super good like item cards from that era that weren't, for example, like some of the rocket cards like the like pow hand extension and stuff like that or the uh, like the Delta cards had Holland transceiver. I can't remember too many other really, really good item cards I'd like to see come back. Uh, is there any that, that I might be forgetting? that are worth mentioning? Honestly, no. Like, it felt like back then it was all about the supporter cards. Um, like, and then the generic uh, item cards like were candy. Um, like, Rare Seeker wasn't even played back then. Um, yeah, I, I, nothing comes to mind. Um, maybe some stadiums like, tr uh, not Tropical Beach. Uh, Crystal Beach? Crystal Beach, exactly. Crystal Beach, uh, could be a decent way to like to limit DCEs and reward basic energy decks. That could be a decent card yeah. to see come back. So to give some, well, we can talk about the stadiums just leading into that. Uh, Crystal Beach was actually a card I had on here. It um, basically the effect of it, it made any special energies that provided was it more than one colorless energy? They provided one colorless, or it just made special energies provide one colorless energy. Something to that. I... Point. Yeah, something like that. I'm generally not sure. I don't recall it, the exact wording for it, but I can look it up. Uh, each special energy card that provides two or more energy now provides only one colorless. So, yeah, I mean, right now it would render um, counter energy useless. It would render, it would render uh, DC less useful. And then, then not played super multi boost energy prism thing, um, completely useless. <laughs> and there's actually a lot of really good special energy from this era too that I think could come back, uh, which uh, we can briefly touch on. A couple of the ones we can maybe talk about in a little bit. I was thinking probably boost energy, scramble energy, and double rainbow. So there were some powerful special energies back in the day that Crystal Beach was very good at uh, shutting off. So if Pokemon does decide to bring back any of these old energies, I think bringing back Crystal Beach would also be uh, kind of nice. But even if they don't bring back the old energies, just having a nice way at maybe countering Zoroark heavy decks, um, you know, forcing them to attach an extra DCE uh, sometimes is pretty <laughs> good. So uh, that's definitely a card I wouldn't mind seeing. Uh, one card I have on my list that's I don't really think saw play from what I remember, but it was always kind of like a like a fan favorite of mine or like a pet card was Holland Circle. And you can correct me, but I don't think it saw competitive play. I generally don't even recall what it does. It is a stadium you put in play, then it prevented all effects of attacks, including damage done. Uh, but then whoever uses an attack, it discards the stadium. So it basically nullifies an attack. Yeah. So, so that was a card that was always like kind of a pet card of mine that uh, it never never really broke out and saw mass competitive play, but that's a card I would love to kind of see come back. Uh, it does have Holland in the name, which was kind of tied to the Delta Pokemon, so we might not see that come back, but the card, it, the effect of it isn't linked to the Delta Pokemon, so that makes me think there's some potential for it. Yeah, we could definitely see the effect come back, and it's definitely very interesting. Um, I could see... Maybe meal decks taking advantage of that, or the fact that um, since now you can't attack on turn one, um, it could be like a good way to to remove that advantage from your opponent. Well, advantage quotation marks, uh, but like to balance the fact that you don't get to attack on turn one by playing that. Maybe that saves your Sorua from getting knocked out by Puzzle, or yeah, it it could be an interesting mechanic to bring back. Yeah, it's uh. 
I like I like cards that slow down the game. Just personally, that's just I, I like slower formats, and uh, that's one reason I always kind of like that card back in the day. Um, and now, of course, we have field blower. People can just field blower away your hall and circle or bump the stadium. But uh, definitely, like I said, it was kind of a pet card of mine. It's not one I really expect to come back. But that's just one of my personal favorites. I'm I'm kind of rooting for. But uh, as far as more playable stadiums, I think one that I've actually been really rooting to come back, or more so during the black and white XY era that I would have loved to see come back was uh, Desert Ruins, actually. That was a stadium card, I believe it was put one damage counter on EXs in between turns. Yeah, yeah. So they could easily scale that up for GXs and EXs as a form of, you know, keeping those in check for your, for your one prize uh, decks. So that's a card that saw a lot of play that I could potentially see them bringing back. Is, is that a card you think that would be good to have back, though? Yeah, that could definitely be be a decent card to see back. Um, it's essentially like a big plus power um, for non-GX decks to reach for that extra damage. They already have Choice Band, uh, but then this would add uh, more damage on top, so maybe that would actually make uh, more non-GX decks uh, viable. So yeah, especially if this set features like a lot of the good older uh, non-GX or non-EX Pokemon. Um, that like they were very good back then because the EXs were also a lot more balanced. Um, I feel uh, like the Panetti X we were talking about had 90 HP. A stage one EX with 90 HP that's unheard of right now. Um, so perhaps something like that could actually allow for those decks to see a lot more play. Definitely so. Yeah, I I, I generally don't have as much of a problem with the like evolution-based GXs that we have today, uh, which is why I was more so rooting for this card to come back during like the XY black and white era since it was so basic EX heavy. But uh, nevertheless, I think it still would be probably good for the game uh, just to have those non-EX decks have more of a chance. Like we have Greninja right now, but in like the basic Hoopa deck, but there's not too many really, really strong uh, non-GX decks. So. Uh, that's definitely a card I think could help them. Uh, similarly, the Holland Circle type of card could even help them, especially like your Empoleon type of decks or your Garchomps or whatever it is. You can come yeah. all for a few turns. So there's all sorts of cool stadiums that could come out to make use of that. Um, uh, we mentioned Cessation Crystal as a way of punishing abilities, but another card that I think uh, could make an appearance, if not Cessation Crystal, could be uh, Cursed, uh, Cursed Stone? Cur or Let me see. Cursed. Yeah, Cursed Stone. Yeah. It, I think it was similar to Desert Ruins, but it was like one damage counter on each Pokemon with a Poke Power or Poke Body. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Only Poke Powers. Okay. So it, yeah. it would Which be right now would today, be abilities. Though. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, that could, that could be another uh, way to balance the, the non GXs if it got out of control or uh, the current GXs. It's, yeah, it's like. Different options uh, that allow for more creative deck building, right? Which is always good for any format. Now, if you had your pick, w would you prefer them to bring back Cessation Crystal or or Cursed Stone? Um, I feel like Cursed Stone because even though there's there always needs to be a way to cancel out like abilities, um, I don't like cards um, that sometimes make your opponent like or yourself like you don't get to play the game, right? You just draw pass. Um, like, that already happens naturally just based on how decks are built and the nature of the game. But then adding layers on top of that that allow your opponent or that allow you to control if your opponent won't get to even play during their turn that much, um, I'm not a huge fan of that. So even though there are counters, um, you would rely on top decking to find the counter field lower and whatnot. Even if you play four, that's only four out of 60 cards you're playing. Um, so I would personally feel uh, more comfortable with such a stadium, um, just punishing your opponent to play certain cards rather than uh, trying to limit them from playing them whatsoever. Yeah, and I think there is merit to if they brought that card back, because it's not a very reactionary stadium like a lot of the stadiums we see printed. You're guaranteed an effect of it. At the very least, you'd be guaranteed, you know, one damage counter or maybe two damage counters if they scale up the damage output for today. You'd at least be guaranteed some sort of effect, but they both kind of serve a similar role at punishing abilities. It's just a matter of what route 
they would want to go. But I would really love it if they print one of those types of cards. It, I don't really yeah. have a preference for which one, but just something to keep abilities in check would be fantastic, I think. Agreed. Uh, something to keep those orcs from not just trading freely every single turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely so. Make them, make them dig for that uh, field blower to get rid of that curse stone. Yeah. Um, let's see. That was it for my stadiums I had mentioned. There's there was a bunch of other good stadiums from the era that we could probably mention. Are there any other that come to mind for you? Those are probably my personal biggest top picks as I was scrolling through all the old cards. Yeah, I mean, now we saw the Alligator, as you said, we don't know exactly which era they're limiting themselves to, or if they are limiting themselves at all. Um, so I feel like the effect of Tropical Beach would be interesting to bring back. Um, I know it's a much more recent card, than the ones we've seen so far. Uh, but something like that would be really cool to see come back, not only uh, to make like access to the card more readily available, because it is an issue in Expanded, I believe. Um, that effect, I feel like, benefits setup decks. And it would be really cool to see uh, a boost to setup decks, to stage the decks in that way, I feel. Um, like the the lesser way I feel would be like with something like Holland Circle, which prevents your opponent from where you're trying to stop them from attacking you, but this would help you in setting up. Um, so something like that, if they're not limited to uh, the specific Ruby and Sapphire block, maybe that could be an interesting card to an interesting effect to just reprint on a different card to not undervalue Tropical Beach, but to bring back the effect. That's a, yeah, that's a good idea because I know some people would probably make the argument that, you know, hey, I, I worked really hard this season to get this cool card that's only given to Worlds competitors. I, I, want, I want that to mean something. So by printing the same effect or a similar effect on uh, another card with a different name, I think would be a nice compromise at, you know, preserving the, I guess, the bragging rights or, you know, whatever you want to call it of the players who got to play in Worlds and obtain these cards, but also give away for everyone else to still have access to the card to be competitive as well. I think that that's a really cool idea, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be the card that, that comes to mind. We've already talked through the Desert Druin and Hollow Circle, which, I mean, Crystone, that are the, the big ones from that era, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. The only other one that I would really be excited about is the pre errata Rare Candy. Um, <sighs> rare Candy is like, I mean... You know, this the channel Rare Candy. You know we have to show love for the yeah. Rare Candy. <laughs> uh, where you could play it on the first turn of Pokemon was put into play. Um, I, I really enjoyed the old evolution mechanic. I mean, I don't know if it's healthy for the game for it to come back like that or not, but uh, I don't know. I, I, w I wouldn't say no if they decide to do that, though. Uh, do you yeah, think I think it, it would be a good compromise between like not bringing back a stadium such as a Broken Time Space or... Forest of Gen Plants, even though it was exclusive for Grass Pokemon, it would be a good compromise to make Stage 2s more viable. Um, and I, like like you, I'm a fan of a slower game, but also a fan of like setting up and evolutions and whatnot. Um, so I would be a fan if they re errated the Rare Candy back to its original wording. Or even if they excluded how, how like you said, a kind of a small thing I guess a lot of people might not know is you could actually play rare candy to evolve your uh, basics into stage ones immediately. So even if they left out that part of it and just allowed exclusively for yeah. stage twos, I would be completely fine with that. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the stage one part was just um, like an oversight from them because they never expected it to be actually um, useful like yeah. why would you want to wear candy into a neat arena when you can wear candy into needling but then uh, my lottie came along and it was like it's never as far as i recall it was never used again in the same way its only purpose for a stage one was for my lottie so i'd be okay with it not being there uh for the stage one because it was just never used in that way except for that one specific scenario makes sense um yeah, we've gone through a lot of cards at this point. Is there anything else that you think we might be forgetting before we start to wrap up this video? Ah, it's just there are so many cards. Um, like, I would be really happy if this set 
paved way to like an era of uh, exploring older cards and bringing back older concepts. Like they've been doing that already. We have a lot of current concepts that already existed back then, but obviously rebalanced. Um, but yeah, like they could go all the way back to to base or like bring back the dark Pokemon mechanics. Um, make something of a cool set between dark and light Pokemon, which we saw very briefly. Um, I would love it if they went back to explore the Delta concept, even if it's very unlikely. Um, like, I always expected the Delta concept to show up in video games. It never did, but that would have also been really cool. So, I don't know, there's just so many sets. Like, I'm looking at the amount of sets, and I've been playing for way too long. <laughs> this video uh, will probably make us feel old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I used to play this when I was 15 years old, like half my life ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, okay, so I guess to to wrap up the the video, top five cards you want them to see bring back in Champions Road slash Celestial Storm. Okay, we already have Blaziken GX, so I want the Firestar Blaziken and I want Delcati. Um, those would definitely be my top three, and then. Uh, top four would be Nidoqueen. I am completely in love with Nidoqueen uh, because of my third place at Worlds back then. And then um, probably some sort of Pidgeot. Um, even if it's not the ability Pidgeot, I feel like Pidgeot has always been underrepresented <laughs> in the trading card game aside from that era. Um, either that or Banet EX. Banet. Uh, the Banet EX reworked to a Banet EX, but extremely powerful. I would be very happy with those five cards in the set. Sam, I feel a little bit somewhere. Bayonet uh, EX coming back is one that I would be excited for. That's definitely up there for me. Um, Blaziken, like, I, I really want the Blaziken GX combo of the EX and the regular. I think that'd be, that, that'd just be like perfect. That way they could represent both these popular cards at, in one card. I'd be really excited for that. Uh, Pidgeot, like I said, I'm not sure how good it would actually be, but I would love to still have it in the format just in case. Um, oh, you know what? We actually forgot some cards. We did. Uh, we forgot to talk about the supporters. Uh, true, true. So, yeah, we never got to copycat. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to this in just one <laughs> second, but yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, copycat, that's actually a card that's on my list uh, as well. And with the um, uh, Sycamore rotating and N rotating, Cynthia looks to be the only decent way of drawing cards that we're going to have after rotation. So there's a couple of key cards I think could really come back here, and Copycat is one of them. Um, yeah. Was it you shuffled in and drew equal to the amount of cards your opponent had? Yeah, exactly. Back then we had that. We had Steven's Advice, which was a really cool card. Yes. That That's also caused a really lot of confusion. Yeah, it caused a lot of confusion uh, to many people because uh, the wording on the card was weird, and people weren't sure if you could only play it if you if you had six and Stevens was your sixth, or if after playing it you needed six cards left in your hand. It caused a lot of ruling headaches <laughs> because of its wording. Uh, but yeah, that would be a really cool card to see come back as well. Yeah, uh, another card that was really popular back when it was. Uh, legal, though I'm skeptical today, would be Celio's Network. That's another card that I really liked back in the day, but it might be too slow if they printed it today. But I, I feel like it's one of those cards Pokemon would consider bringing back. But yeah, I feel like they would bring it back, but probably like back then we never had anything as close to Old Trouble, like as close to specific Pokemon search like Old Trouble. Um, so. I feel like because of that, yeah. Celio's Network would definitely be uh, just a, a binder card, unfortunately. Yeah, and just to give some context, I'll let you search your deck for a basic or evolution card, excluding EXs, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And we actually already had a card like that in the Kalos starter set called Trevor. You yeah. search your deck for a Pokemon put into your hand, but that card obviously never saw play, especially when we had things like Professor Sycamore and N in format. Mm -hmm. And even Skyla, there just wasn't a whole lot of reason to play that. So if they brought back Celia's Network, I'd prefer just to have Trevor instead, just because there's no like stipulation as to what Pokemon you can get. And even that card yeah, exactly. wasn't that great. So I hope yeah. they exclude Celia's Network. It'd be cool to have back for nostalgia purposes, but not a card 
I would be excited though. To, to yeah, exactly. It's just it's definitely like there are so many ways to search for the Pokemon you need. We have Olivia, we have Bridget, we have Ultra Ball, we have like even even Pokeball, based on the fact that it's not a supporter, um, is arguably more useful than Celos Network as of today. Like yeah. maybe in a different format, in a slower format, perhaps Celos Network would be a lot better. Uh, but today, I would I would never consider playing Celos Network. So yeah, not a card I would be excited about. And I did mention N is leaving the format, but a card that we had back in this era was Rocket's Admin, which is a card that I could see coming back as well. It is just N, but just called something else. So it's just called Rocket's Admin. Uh, so that is definitely a card that is on the table, I think, to come back. But do you want that effect in the current game after after rotation pablo uh well i mean there have been some formats where such an effect was not uh present like uh, in 2007 and 2008 i believe maybe 2009 like there's been like we had judge and uh different ways to control the hand but definitely 2007 i purposely played uh vaporeon ex which when evolved, you would shuffle, you would your opponent would shuffle their hand and draw four cards. That was the only way to control your opponent's hand. Um, so I feel like Pokemon has always wanted such an effect to be present. Um, and the fact that they've reprinted N without any sort of um, marketing related stuff to Gen 5 alongside it, like the reprint of N in Fates Collide uh, signified to me that they want that effect to stay. So this would be the perfect excuse to keep the effect, but also do it with a new, with a new card, a brand new card. And um, the fact that uh, Team Rocket appeared in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon would also tie to the video game in a way. So they have the marketing aspect covered there as well. So I do feel like those are good arguments for uh, Team Rocket's admin to to make a comeback, perhaps in a, under a different name even. Um, like Giovanni or Giovanni something, um, but I I would I wouldn't mind seeing the effect uh, make a comeback honestly. Yeah, I I definitely echo a similar sentiment. I I like an effect like this being in the game, not necessarily end specifically, but I definitely think there's especially when you have something like Zora Arc GX in the format, being able to regulate your opponent's hand sizes. I think kind of a necessary. Uh, you know, thing to be able to have with with the Zora Arc in the format alone. So if they do bring back Rocket to Admin, I'm okay with it. Uh, we will still have Judge in format just because it did get a reprint in uh, Forbidden Light, uh, I believe it was. So we would still have some way to regulate our opponent's hand size. But if they do bring back Rocket to Admin, I'm fine with that too, just because uh, the supporter pool that we'll have to build decks with won't be the greatest. So having that still in the format would be okay with me personally. Yeah, I agreed. Um, it would be a good effect to to keep. Like, it adds randomness to the game, but um, I feel like it's a necessary evil, if you will, um, to keep things balanced. Sure, I can see that. Um, yeah, I think. I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, most of the other really exciting supporters to me are like the Holland engine, for example. Yeah. And like I said, most likely we won't see any of those. So um, not too many other supporters I'm really excited to see come back. Maybe Castaway, that's one I could maybe see. Uh, that was like, search your deck for a tool, basic energy, and I think a supporter, actually. I think yeah. Um, Definitely something like that. Definitely tool and energy. I'm actually not sure if you could search for the supporter as well. Uh, yeah, all three actually. Supporter, tool, and basic energy. So, we're gonna so lose, yeah, that... yeah, we're gonna lose Skyla as well. So that that seems like a decent form of search we could have, especially if they do bring back Cessation Crystal in the same set. That would be a yeah. nice little combo that you could that you could have there. So nice. that's one I could see coming back as well, but I think that's about it for me. Uh, we already got TV Reporter confirmed, so that mm -hmm. is going to be in the set, but... Uh, I wonder if, if they'll let us... Like, TV Reporter should mean we can use the old ones, right? Yeah, Correct? It's right. the exact same wording, and even the art, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm sure people will be showing off their reverse holo 
uh, team reporters, which were extremely rare back then, and they still are today, of course. But the question is, do you, do you play full art TV reporter or you play Rev Hollow ones from like Dragon or whatever the set was? Yeah, well, I guess Max Rarity would probably be the reverse Hollow, so <laughs> that's true, actually. Yes, <laughs> yeah. all full art, then you go with the full arts, uh, but. Max Max Rarity would be the the older ones for sure. Cool. I I think this time we 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 went over everything. I don't think there's anything else we can really uh, touch on at this point. So now we have supporters like uh, in the mix. Your top five is still probably the same though. Um. Yeah. I think I'd be like. I know we're getting good supporters eventually to replace the ones that we currently have either uh, a discard your hand and draw seven reprint effect on some other card or a variety but um just the nostalgia purpose i mean the nostalgia factor of the pokemon um that makes it uh like my top five cards being pokemon for sure and pokemon that i did well in the past so long ago definitely now that we're talking about supports that does uh, influence probably i'd pick steven's advice is in there for me if not as its regular card, I could see even like a Prism Star version where it's like just draw equal to the amount of like Pokemon your opponent has uh, with no restriction on like the hand size you have but prior to playing. I could see something like that. Um, or just the regular version of the card itself I'd be fine with. So Steven's advice is definitely in there for me. Uh, Blaziken and or Blaziken EX, Bayonet EX. Um... I'm going to kind of cheat again and say either Cessation Crystal or Cursed Stone just because they both serve a similar purpose. Yeah, so ability the, balance, yeah. Yeah, just something for abilities. And then beyond that, probably, man, that's tough. I, I want to say Guardi because I love Gardevoir, but uh, I might, I'm going to say Pidgeot instead, I think. <laughs> I think that's going to be mine. Unfortunately, though, like, I don't think any of those cards that you or I mentioned, like in, at least the Pokemon, would change the metagame too much. No, like, probably not. <laughs> like, depending on how they upgrade him, of course. Um, like a fighting type Blaze Against GX, maybe that could shake the things up a little bit because oh. of the fighting typing. I'd actually say Bayonet EX. I think the ability is good enough to see play. I think that card would genuinely see play, but the others I'd be more skeptical of. Uh, but if you make Bayonet weak to dark, like it was Oh, before, yeah. I keep forgetting it's that, a ghost. Yeah, that would be horrible. Like, if they avoid doing that and they make it weak to psychic, maybe. But uh, it's just, I can already tell the weakness of Bayonet would be its downfall. Yeah. I, I would still try that. I still really like the ability. I would love to, to try that out in today's format. And lose, probably, because it's weak to dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, uh... I'd say Jirachi is probably one of my like oh, a yeah. card that that didn't quite make the top spot, but I would love to see. Uh, kind the of like you said, the, yeah. the like the hybrid between the two different Jirachis, I would love a card like that too. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. To to go back to the, I want to start with this Pokemon, so I'm gonna play four copies of it, even, even though it's only useful early. That could be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, I would really like that too. But uh, yeah, we could probably. Reminisce all day. <laughs> yeah, so I, exactly. I, I think uh, I think I should probably wrap wrap this one up. But uh, I, I appreciate you coming on, Pablo. Like I said, uh, you played a lot during this era, so it really meant a lot to have someone you know with your knowledge of the game back then to, to come in and discuss all these cool cards we could see come back. Are there any shout outs or anything you want to give before we wrap this up? Uh, well, shout outs to gonna give shout out to my sponsors. Um, yeah, like uh, Cyber Scoop and Tabletop Village, they've been really supporting me throughout this season and um, like even though I've been playing for so long right now, the reason that I'm able to do everything that I do um, is because in part because of them and in part because of all the Tablemont supporters so big shout out to to them as well and of course to you, thank you so much for, for inviting me, big fan of your channel and uh, like just earlier today I was watching your Greninja GX versus Ultronic oh, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> really big fan of, of your future decks uh, content. <laughs> cool. Well, 
awesome Pavel, like I said, happy to have you on. But uh, as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe, and I will have a link below in the description to Pablo's channel table on as well if you want to check out what all he does over there too. But uh, with that, I appreciate you guys watching, and if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, either of those things would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.